thank you so much, uh, Parsons, for inviting me to be a part of this. Um, can I just... Left and right. That's there we go, there we go. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's like me. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know about that. Uh, I know, thanks. Thanks for that. Um, so I'm not near as cool as that, but I appreciate that, that hard work. <laughs> Um, so, I'm very excited to be here. So, I'm Christopher Lacey, the director of Barney's uh, New York's Customer Experience and Strategy Program. I've actually been in the industry for 20 years, um, originally starting out with Armani at age 17. Uh, so, that means a lot because I, was, I grew up in the 80s um, in Dallas. So, I was born in 1980, and so my, my, my thoughts of luxury were very much centered around this um, right here. So I'm, I will take you through what this looks like. So my, my parents' home where I grew up was not far from South Fork Ranch. Um, so, you know, you have the TV show Dallas that's happening, and so there's the whole money, everyone is very wealthy, and everyone that you run into will always say everything's bigger in Texas, and we're just dramatic and spend tons of money on things, and so you just grow up with that. Um, I had an obsession with James Bond, though, who uh, I, I always wanted a Jaguar, so that was another thing, it was something else material. And then right over here, it, this is a duck a l'orange. So the reason that's there is because I don't know if you noticed, but Bette Midler in every movie always ordered the duck a l'orange. Maybe <laughs> you're not old enough to know that, but she did. Um, a thing that she did. And lastly, I have to tell you, so this, this defined me as I was, this woman here, this is Diane Carroll, also known as Dominique Devereaux on Dynasty. Um, she defined my definition of what luxury was. You see, there was a scene in Dynasty where she enters into a hotel, the, the camera angle is perfect. It's letting you know right from the beginning that this is a woman of means, you see, because there's busboys, there's six busboys with, with trolleys, and then she enters into the scene, but they still don't show you her face. It's just heels and a pant suit in white, uh, which we later find out is Bill Blass. And so she clicks her way to the counter, and the gentleman standing there says, hello, miss, and she says, Devereaux. Now, at this point, the camera has come to where she is. Her hair swoops to one side. She's wearing diamond earrings with pearls in the center, and she also has a shawl, you see, that is all white, and it has white fur that goes along the side, and she pops her hand back down on the counter, and he says, we're very excited to give you your junior suite, Miss Devereaux. And she looks at him and says, junior suite? I specifically asked for a two-bedroom suite. She said, I require a room for my wardrobe and a room for myself. I don't sleep in my clothes and I don't sleep with them. <laughs> And she tells him that if he can't find a room in that hotel, that they must find a hotel that can accommodate her. I'm seven years old in my parents' home, and two things happened at that moment. One, I think my parents were like, and he's gay. <laughs> and two, I gasped, because I thought, that right there, that's luxury. That's what I want. And so from that moment, that defines what I perceived to be luxury. It was the ability to walk into a place with stature, with material goods, with a look, with an onus. You understood what you wanted. There were things. You, you could order meals in different languages with no problem. Okay? It was, that was luxury to me. All right? That was luxury to me because, you know, my family at times, we were like eating spam sandwiches. So, you know, I duck all around and you understand what that was. So, as I started to progress in the industry uh, throughout working for Armani and Gucci and Hugo Boss and Omega, um, I defined more things about materialism, but there was something else that I realized started to take shape as I stepped into this role and started to really understand customer experience and studying people and how they engage with brands. 
And whenever anyone is asked, they always say that the disruptors in the industry, of course, are the internet and Amazon and all these things, and that's true. But I have to be honest. I mean, personally, I think that what disrupted, disrupted the luxury industry the most is a fast food chain, and we didn't even realize that they did it. It was so subtle. <laughs> they came out with a campaign that said, have it your way. And if you don't remember, we were all into it. There were t-shirts that said, have it your way. You would talk to people, they'd be like, well, I'm going to have it my way. And you'd be like, relax, it's a banana. <laughs> you know? it's, it's a whole thing that people had. It's always have your way. And so we were in the luxury sphere. We were like, oh, look at that little company now, that company at fast food. They're talking about burgers and pickles and fries. And we didn't realize that it was trickling up to us where people were walking in and they were going to start saying things like, I don't want to wait six months for my handbag to be made. I don't want that. And it actually changed something with us as a society and a civilization to where the golden rule also no longer applied. Now you're all sitting here thinking, what's the golden rule? Because most of you don't remember. And some of you are thinking, yes, that the customer is always right. That is not true. I'm joking. <laughs> But the golden rule was treat others the way you want to be treated. And the thing that came that that was no longer important, it was treat me the way I want to be treated. So that changes luxury, right? The luxury of life is now I don't have to be treated. I don't have to be like anyone else. I can be and experience what I want. And so that's where luxury is now. And that's definitely how I define it. So while before it was the moments with Diane Carroll and earrings and really cool cars, it turns into after being in the industry and, and being able to see how things are made by hand and how beautiful the process is and understanding what goes behind that. And then the luxury to me is being able to take time to go experience nature and to see a whale jumping out of the water, and to see how something is so beautifully built, whether it is architecture, whether it is clothing, and to spend those moments with friends and have things custom designed to me. That's where luxury is now. It is the business of you. And I would say that we could literally take away the word luxury and we could replace it with two words, I am, whatever. And that is luxury now. It is finding your I am. And every brand has to figure out what their consumer's I am is if we are to connect with them appropriately to grow the business. So, that's me. Thank you so much.